guys, we are looking at a Goodman unit. One of the guys was here this morning. And the back of the defrost board was arcing right there against the cabinet or the interior of the unit. So he left the disconnect out. I'm back. We called to order a board and they didn't have any. They said we can get one tomorrow. But I'm gonna, we left the disconnect off. Well, I figure it's gonna be 75 degrees this afternoon. And we wanna get this guy some air conditioning while he's waiting on that board. And you can bypass these and still run the system. You're just not gonna have your defrost. Yeah, it's not gonna get below 50 tonight, so we should be okay. You can figure last week it was freezing and ice everywhere. Now it's blue skies and 75 degrees. But anyway, so the high vault, there we go, that's probably why those pins are loose as all get out right there. So, and that's our line voltage coming in from the contactor for the fan. So I'm going to take that off and get that out of the circuit. And then I'm going to take my fan speed. And then I'm going to go down here and hook it to the same place that wire was connected on the contactor. So basically, the fan on this thing is going to run constantly in heating and in cooling. He'll be able to run both. He's just going to lose the defrost control, turning the fan off. And I don't think it's going to go into defrost tonight because like I said, it's going to be about 50 degrees. But it's 75 right now it's going to be a couple degrees warmer sun shining down on the house we want to try to get the man some air conditioning until we can get back with the board so let's put the power back in see if it fixes the problem or at least we'll temporarily band-aids it anyway Alrighty. now well, let's push the contactor in and see what happens make sure nothing sparks there which it shouldn't because the fan has been moved to the contactor so there we go oh i bet the contactor closed i must be getting a call for why now let me check that real yeah so we're getting a call uh, so the thermostat came on while I was doing that. Anyway. No arcing. So that'll get him some Get him some cooling between now and tomorrow. So we'll hook that back together. Alright, so we are back. This is the defrost board we're going to put in there. It's one of those universals. It's the White Rogers 47D01U-843. Try this, evidently Goodman. Finally can't get that defrost board maybe. They said they didn't have any. This is what they were using. So this is what we're going to put in. I've never installed one of these, but we're going to give it a shot. I looked over the instructions a little bit, and it seems pretty straight, straightforward with the wiring and then the, the setup on it and functions and features available on that that are not available on the regular boards. You can run your auxiliary heat out here to this board and do an outdoor lockout with it and you can use it on rings or anything set it up there's part numbers <laughs> there and then you flip it over to the other side there different manufacturers so different brands goodman ream honeywell icm controls train linux york so we'll see how it does First thing we gotta do is get this one out. And 
I'm not going to go through this whole removal process straight up and down. The thermostat is off. I'm going to disconnect my R because I don't really feel like crawling all the way under the house to pull the disconnect box or digging around trying to find a breaker in a garage that's piled with everything everything but motor vehicles so I'm just going to disconnect my R while I'm doing this and a lot of this will have to be rewired and there's a wire I took off of it I'll use that on a capacitor or something at some point in time first thing we got to do is get this one out and uh, get everything wired this one can be mounted different directions and when you do the setup on it that display right there you can set it up to rotate depending on which direction you're going to be looking at so i'm thinking we're probably going to put this thing in there like that or like that we'll see but let me get that one out first all right so i've got it mounted in there and it comes with you got two different options you got a you got two sensors in here an ambient sensor and then you've got a coil sensor so i can set this thing up to do time based defrost time and temperature or i can set it up to be a demand set it's a goodman so it was a time and temperature with your coil sensor either way i might have to pop the top run that coil sensor down there put it on that coil run the ambient sensor on it I haven't made up my mind which way I'm going to set it up, probably the way it's always operated. But this one also has the quiet shift, so I can set it up where it'll shut off first, switch to reverse and valve, come back on and defrost, defrost when it reaches temperature, shut back off, switch the reversing valve back, and then come back on. So it'll have that quiet shift, which is something this one didn't have with the old defrost board. So it really doesn't have anything in the instruction about where to put the coil sensor. And it doesn't really fit very well on any of the u bands The defrost switch was on this one. But that sensor, I had to crimp it down a little bit to get it tight. But it won't fit really. It's meant to be snapped to a straight line, not a U-bend. So I put it on that bottom tube coming off of that coil back here it's the best location i could find to put it then i'm going to run the ambient sensor outside here and i may just go ahead and set this thing up for a demand type of a defrost all right so the book gives you a list of what all your wire terminals are they're all labeled cc rv contactor common reversing valve and you're going to have your reversing valve for your common Y out, low pressure cutout, high pressure cutouts. So you're basically just going to wire this thing in based on your list and what, which one it tells you to do. So kind of, sort of, plug and play. When you do the setup on it, you identify whether you're using a low pressure switch, a high pressure switch, one or the other, or neither one and the board will know whether to recognize it or use those. This Goodman board only has one pressure switch on it. These yellow and orange, or the yellow wire with the orange stripe right there. And if I'm not mistaken, yep, that runs to our true suction line coming off the reversing valve back to the compressor. So we're only going to be using a low pressure switch in this setup. So I'll unplug those two wires there and just simply plug them back up here to our low pressure switch terminals. And there's the problem number one. These plastic covers do not fit inside those. So that's going to have to come off to get that in there so that's the first problem right there 
All right, guys, I got this thing in. I don't know if it'll work or not. The instructions aren't all that. I mean, they're kind of okay, but some of it you just, it's just, I took the outdoor ambient sensor and just tucked it back down inside the outdoor unit. It'll be fine. It's right down in there. It's just, I didn't want to go through the trouble of having to drill a big ass hole and getting grommets and having to worry about cutting the wire. I just tucked it back in there. It's back here when this thing's running, that fan's pulling, it's going to read the outdoor temperature. But I thought Goodman was bad about cramming 20 yards of wire inside one of these outdoor units. Now look at all this shit. I mean, come on. I hadn't hooked up my hot wire yet, but from a 24 volts to power this thing, I still got to plug the fan in right there. But, damn. What a, what a mess. Anyway. I need to get some zip ties when I'm done. I'm gonna get the thing on first and run it and see. Hopefully it'll work. Anyway, let me get my fan wire unplugged back there for my fan speed. And I'm gonna plug that there. And then have my other wire, which I need to plug back over to the other side of this relay, and plug it back to the contactor so the fan will run. And look at that, that sensor wire slid right off. I don't know. Maybe it'll stay on there. I don't know. We're going to try it. It is what it is. So, let me hook up 24 volts to it. Make sure our fuse don't blow. See if my my display comes on right there. Yep. And my reversing valve energized. And there's my smiley face. So I've got to change the rotation on that screen for up and down. So let me get that set up real quick. I'll walk through that with you. Alright guys, so I got the thing on. You got a seed being displayed right there. It doesn't show up well on the camera, but there's a C right there. And that just means it's in... Uh, according to this thing, we're in cooling mode. So, and these were diff different displays it'll give you on there for your faults. If you have a lockout, low pressure lockout, that kind of thing. <clears throat> I thought I was recording a while ago when I was actually setting this board up. And if you go through the book, you've got an options button right there. And then you have a select button. And as you go through the book, you'll set up and go in and see what your errors are, your fault recall list, references, the last several faults that were stored. Just quick setup right there. Goodman Carrier Lennox 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever manufacturer, put that number in. And then you go down here and you set everything up for your um, low temperature for enabling the defrost cycle and then the termination coil temperatures setting on it to terminate the defrost cycle. Um, I went ahead and set this one up for demand defrost. I ran that coil or the outdoor sensor outdoor ambient sensor back inside the outdoor unit not really anywhere to run it out here you see this gaggle of shit right here all these wires this extra mess is, you got to find a way to get that in there so i had to get a zip tie and clean that shit up but anyway the defrost termination temperature um <clears throat> defrost cycle like i said i'm not using the 60 70 90 minutes of run time i'm going to do a demand date based on this one got your short cycle time we left it at five minutes are we on the ream or are we on this everything else in the world set your reversing valve whether it energizes and cooling or heat this one has the delay on it zero seconds 12 seconds 30 so this does the quiet shift when it shuts off come back on running defrost shut back down shift 
come back on, run back in heat. So that, that something it didn't have before. And then you got the other page over here. It's probably going to turn out to be the best video, but you got your maximum defrost time. I set that at 10 minutes. You can do an auxiliary heat lockout on this one. Bring your auxiliary heat. Instead of going straight from the thermostat to the air handle, you can bring it out here. Use that outdoor ambient sensor to set an auxiliary lockout if you want to. Then you come in here and you set your <clears throat> low temp compressor cutout. Um, we're not using a thermostat or anything on the compressor, so we're not using that function. Uh, you've got a brownout if your high voltage or something drops, your low voltage brownout as well. And then your low pressure switch and high pressure switch. I went ahead and this unit did have a high pressure switch. It was using the low pressure switch going directly to the board. It was using the high pressure switch to take the Y coming in from the thermostat, break it back to the contactor. So, or break it, uh, break it back to Y in on the board. So I ended up just taking that instead and using it as a high pressure switch because it is mounted to the discharge line or the liquid line in the outdoor unit. Set it up so that it, has a high, it is using a high and low and then just ran my Y straight to the board instead of through that switch. Really the only change I made. So we'll see you guys. It's on, we're running in cooling right now. See for cooling. I'll switch it in heat. I won't run it very long. Um, 78 degrees out here so it's 76 in the house they've left it off all day i really don't want to get them hot in there so pretty sure it works but i'll run it long enough i'm not going to record all that but that's installing one of these boards guys and then you, you just it just i don't know if goodman didn't run enough wire in here from the factory to wire 15 units up with, there'd be room to tuck this stuff in there. But Goodman, man, back in the day, they they loaded you up with some wire on an outdoor unit. You didn't need all that shit. Some of these wires, I could stretch them from here to the grill over there. You don't need all that. But anyway, it's in, it's working. That's the old one. That's where it was arcing on the back of the panel, up there. So, anyway guys, that is uh, this gadget right here. I mean, to have something like that to get you out of a pinch on a weekend or something, something that's not under warranty, maybe it's cool to have one of these on the truck. But damn if I'd want to be wiring one of these things in every fight. There ain't no way. I'd, I'd rather get the OEM board plug and play and come back and deal with this mess anyway guys like subscribe and have a good weekend